Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta, and today we'll understand the concept of non-stationarity and how to do unit root testing of the data in R. Covariance stationarity of Y implies that over time Y has constant mean, constant variance. Covariance between different observations do not depend upon time t, and it depends only on the distance or lag between them, that is g. Let's understand this concept. In the first plot, just see the blue line. This blue line is for the constant mean. See the distance between the blue dotted lines. It is constant. So this is an example of constant mean. See the distance between the red lines. This constant. So this is an example of constant covariance. The second one, the green line, the example of constant mean. The distance between the green dotted lines. Constant variance. But just see the distance of red lines. It is not constant. So this is non-constant covariance. The third one. See the slope of green line. This means that your mean is not constant. See the distance between the green lines, green dotted lines. This constant. So variance is constant. Red lines, constant covariance. As the distance is equal. Fourth one. Green line. Mean is constant. See the distance between the green dotted lines. It is decreasing. Means that this is an example of non-constant variance. See the distance of the red lines. This constant. So the constant covariance. The first, uh, the first plot is an example of the stationary time series. Second, third and fourth. It's the, they are the example of non-stationary time series. So what we require in the stationarities, mean should be constant, variance should be constant, as well as covariance should also be constant. Let's proceed further. Yt is equal to 5, yt minus 1 plus ut. It means that the series depends upon the past value, that is past the lag 1. So yt is equal to 5, yt minus 1. Let's proceed further. When phi is less than 1, then the series is stationary. If phi is less than 1, then the series is stationary. When phi is greater than 1, then the series explodes. When phi is equal to 1, then series is stationary, as shown below. This is known as AR1 models, as the first difference of this series is stationary. When phi is equal to 1, the series is non-stationary, and it means that the sock never dies away. When phi is greater than 1, the series explodes, which means that any shock given to the system propagates and increases with time, which never happens. Moreover, it does not describe many theories in economic and finance. When phi is less than 1, shocks to the system gradually dies away, and so most of the, theor uh, most of the theories fit here. Let's understand this concept. Yt is equal to phi yt minus 1 plus ut. If phi is equal to 1, then yt contains a unit root. Subtracting yt minus 1 from both the sides of the equation, we get yt minus yt minus 1 is equal to yt minus 1 minus yt minus 1 plus et. So this is delta yt is equal to et. And because et is a white noise process, then we have that is delta yt is a stationary series. Therefore, after differencing yt, read the lines after differencing yt, we obtain the stationarity. Dickey and Fuller devised a procedure to formally test for non-stationarity. The key insight of that test is that the testing for non-stationarity is equivalent to testing for the existence of unit root. The simple AR1 model of the form yt is equal to phi yt minus 1 plus ut. Here we need to examine that whether phi is equal to 1 or not. The null hypothesis is phi is equal to 1 and the alternative hypothesis is h1 is that is phi is less than 1. We saw the scenario that is phi greater than 1 can never exist and therefore the alternative is phi is less than 1. Subtracting yt minus 1 from both the sides of the equation we get yt minus yt minus 1 is equal to phi yt minus 1 minus yt minus 1 plus ut. So delta yt minus 1 is equal to phi minus 1 yt minus 1 plus ut. So yt minus 1 is a common. Delta yt minus 1 is equal to gamma yt minus 1. 
So phi minus 1 is now gamma. So gamma yt minus 1 plus ut. Here gamma is equal to phi minus 1. Relationship between phi and gamma. None. Gamma is 0. So the phi is equal to 1. Let's understand this. Gamma is 0, which means that phi is equal to 1. The original series interpretation would be series is non-stationary in this scenario. In first difference, the series is stationary. The alternative, HA, gamma less than 0. Phi, in this scenario, the alternative hypothesis for phi will be phi less than 1. Original series interpretation, series stationary. First difference, series stationary. Alternative hypothesis, gamma greater than 0, HA, Phi greater than 1. Series explodes. Non-stationary. This can never exist. Now let's understand the augmented Dicky fuller test. ADF will be applied on three equations given below. Yt is random walk. Yt is equal to delta yt minus 1 plus ut. Yt is a random walk with drift. Yt is equal to beta 1 plus delta yt minus 1 plus ut. Yt is a random walk with drift around the stochastic trend. So Yt is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2, beta 2 t plus delta Yt minus 1 plus ut. Now in case, if your original series is non-stationary, non then we will take the first difference to make it stationary. How we take the first difference? It's very simple. See, the original series, 75, that is today's temperature, 75, 78, 80, 77, 82, 79. We take the first difference, 78 minus 70, 80 minus 78, 77 minus 80, 82 minus 77, 79 minus 82. The second difference will be 2 minus 3, minus 3 minus 2, which is here, 5 minus minus 3, minus 3 minus 5. So this is second difference. Now how we'll uh, do the unit root testing in R? Let's see. So first we will import the data go in environment import the data set from excel the name of the data is data set open so in the first column we are having year in the second column production press import we want to check the stationarity of this variable production We'll start with the attach command, attach data set, run. Now we will load the package, Urka. So go in tools, install package. Because this package contains the unit root testing. Press install. Now activate its library. What is our null hypothesis? Data is non-stationary or in other words data is having the unit root that is our null hypothesis alternative is data is stationary or in other words data is not having the unit root we'll start with unit root test adf augmented dq fuller test with the label data that is no differencing no drift no trend y underscore non it's a name which we are giving to this object you are dot different dot df that is dq fuller test the name of the variable is production this one type non select legs according to the ekik information criterion run and run now see this p value let's write the interpretation as the p value is 0.1183 which is more than 0 0.05 so we fail to reject null hypothesis and conclude that Series is having a unit root, which means that series is non-stationary. It's not stationary. Now let's proceed further. Let's check for the drift. Y underscore drift UR dot TF production type drift select lags according to the AKIK information criteria. Run it. Summary Y underscore drift interpreting. See the p-value. As the p-value is 0.5727, which is more than 0 
So we fail to reject null hypothesis and conclude that series is having a unit root, which, mean, which means that series is not stitched there. Let's proceed further. Now check for the trap. Why? At present, we are working on the level data only. No differencing has been done. Why underscore trend ur.tf production type trend select lacks akaike information criteria. Run. Run. See the p value. So, as the p value is 0.136, which is more than 0 0.05, so we fail to reject null hypothesis and conclude that series is having a unit root, which means that the series is not stationary. Now, we'll take the first difference of this series to check that do we get the stationarity or not. So, unit root test ADF with first difference no drip, no trend, dy none. So, uh, now I'll write dy. It means that we, we are doing the first difference to the series ur.df round bracket difference of the production means the first difference. We already saw the concept of first difference. This is the concept. See this. First difference. Okay. Let's go back to the script. Type none. Select legs according to the IK information criterion. Run. Run. And see the p-value 3.49 e raised to minus 6. It means that it is less than 0 0.05. So what will be our interpretation as the p-value is 0, 0.00, which is less than, uh, as the p-value is almost 0, 0.00, which is less than 0 0.05. So we reject null hypothesis and conclude that series is not having the unit root, which means that the series is stationary. Now let's check for the drift dy underscore drift ur dot df round bracket difference of the production variable type drift select legs akai information criterion run run again see the p-value so as the p-value is 0 0.00 which is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis and conclude that series is not having the unit root which means that the series is stage time let's proceed further Let's check for the trend. Unit root test with first difference with trend. dy underscore trend ur.df round bracket difference production type is trend select legs akaike information criterion run run and again see the p-value it is almost near to near to zero. So as the p-value is 0 0.00 which is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis and conclude that series is not having the unit root which means that the series is stationary we can also run the adf test uh, in t series package so activate the library t series run the adf dot test for the production run so see the p value our interpretation will be as the p value is more than 0 0.05, so we fail to reject null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is data is non-stationary and in other words, data is having the unit root. Now let's take the first difference of it, adf.test, round bracket, difference, production, run, and see the p-value. Now here the p-value is less than 0 0.05, so we reject null hypothesis, which means that data is stationary or in other words, data is not having the unit root. So this was all about the concept of non-stationarity and unit root testing in R. For more videos on econometrics using R, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I have, I have uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also join me on different social medias, link given in the description box.